Hello, I'm Gavin Howie, and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that's got everything for us photographers. Now, I love doing location portraits, but it's not always possible to get outside and shoot. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to take an outside photo inside. It's going to take a little bit of planning with lighting, quite a little bit of Photoshop, we'll get to that shortly. And it all starts with this picture right here that I took a few years ago, and I think this would make a great location, except it's a long way from where I am now. So whilst you're clicking on the subscribe button and the bell icon so you never miss an Adorama TV video, I'm going to set light up, let's get a model in, let's get shooting. So this is my interpretation of a, an urban background. It's sort of a grungy, corrugated metal. I've even got a little lamp up here. Hopefully this should feel like, when it's finished, the actual scene that we're going to add this into. Now to get to that point, we need to do a little bit of work and I'll take you through it each step at a time. But the first and most important thing we need is an awesome model. And I'm really lucky because today we've got the fantastic Fern. Come on in, Fern. So Fern's going to be the model for this shoot. I'm going to get her to go right up against the background. That's great. And then I'm going to get my camera and try to recreate the position I was in when I took the main photo. So I was around about, well, my height. That's lucky. I'm using this lens on a wide angle, which I think is similar to how I was on the day. And I'm going to come at a bit of an angle to the wall because there was a nice perspective and I need to try and match that in this photo and the final photo. So let's just take a test shot, see what we get. Here we go, Fern. And that's okay, it's a start, but we can do a little bit better by changing just a few things. The first thing I've done is add this. This is effectively a full stop, it's the end of the scene. Beyond this I don't really need to worry about anything over here, and it's going to make photoshopping everything on this point a lot easier. So let's see how this looks. Let's grab my camera, take the same shots or as close as we can. Here we go. And that's great. That is exactly what I'm hoping for. A nice straight edge. That should make the Photoshop bit a bit easier. Now we need to think about light, because although the room lights were pretty good, if we take control of the light, we can get much more dramatic lighting, maybe even match the sort of lighting there is in the picture we're trying to blend in with. So I could use my usual flashpoint lights, but I want to simulate what it's like to have kit that you can't take on location. So I've got a mains powered, I've borrowed a mains powered Elinchrom ELC 500. And this is perfect because it's a great studio light, but not something you could really easily take on location without some sort of external power supply. So let's take a shot like this and see how this affects the picture. Now I've switched to manual mode, taking control of the, the lighting in here. But basically, same sort of settings as I had before, but now we've got really dramatic lighting. I like the fact there's that nice little bit of a vignette going on there. In fact, I'd even like to emphasize that. And to do that, I'm going to need to change the light just slightly. What I've done is added this, which is an egg crate grid. Every softbox should have this as an option because they can help to contain the light in a smaller area, effectively giving me a bit more of a vignette. So that's the idea. Let's just turn it around to face Fern. I get an added bonus out of this as well because it is a tighter area of light. The background will go dark. That doesn't particularly matter in this case because we're going to Photoshop that whole thing away anyway, but it's a nice touch. More usefully, it should help to make this end just a little bit more darker as well, and that adds to the depth in the picture. Well, that's the idea. Let's see what we get. Now, I've still got the light at exactly the same power as the last picture. Now, an egg crate grid will take away some of the light. It won't be as bright. Let's see if it does. Here we go. Yeah, it does indeed. So now it's good, but it's definitely not as bright as it was before. So I'm going to say maybe about a stop of light. I'm going to increase the power. Let's see how this looks. Here we go, Fern. And that looks fantastic. The final picture that we're trying to blend into obviously has a blue cast that we don't have now. 
I can do that in post-processing really easy, but it's nice to see on the back of the camera that same similar blue color. So to achieve that, I'm actually gonna change my white balance. I'm gonna dial in a custom white balance of about 4,000K, and I'm gonna add some green into this as well. All of this can be changed in post, but it should mean that when I take this picture, it kind of looks a little bit more like it's at nighttime. Okay, Fern, here we go. So now we definitely have that slightly colder blue feel. Yes, we can shift it around later, but it's nice to see it looking about right straight out of camera. Because I've got this little light back here, I thought it would be fun to put a light source in there. Now I don't have an Elinchrom speed light, but what I do have is a flashpoint speed light and it's now on its slave mode. So when it sees the flash from this, it will fire. I've got a red gel on it just for a splash of color and I'm gonna tuck it in behind like that. And by chance, it's a perfect fit, which is lucky. Okay, so let's just test this. Now I'm gonna make sure I can actually see the light behind Fern, otherwise, of course, this rather defeats the purpose of putting it there. But that's great, I can see really nicely that little splash of red back there. It adds just a bit of interest to that area. And I think that's a really nice addition. Okay, so let's do the shoot. Fern, are you ready? Okay, we'll take a few pictures. Here we go. So the photography's done, it's now time to move into the Photoshop part of things. So here's my background, here's the picture of Fern I want to add in. I'll go to Select and All, Edit and Copy, and then back to the background, Edit and Paste. That gives me two layers, one with Fern and one with the background image, but I can't see the background through the area I need to. That's a nice easy fix. Let's go to Layer. Let's go to Layer Mask and I'll choose Reveal All. That applies a white layer mask. You can see it just here. And because it's white, I need a paintbrush that is the opposite, black. And then with an opacity of 100%, that would be useful. And then I can just paint with a nice soft edged brush like that. I'm not going all the way up to the full stop pillar thing there. I'm gonna get, leave a, a little bit of a fuzzy edge and I'll show you why in just a little bit. Now, obviously I've got the wrong side of my background showing through. So let's get the move tool. I'm gonna to come down to my layers, click on the background layer to make it active, and click on the padlock to remove the padlock. Now, I can actually drag this across, hold shift so it doesn't go up and down at all, and I'm just looking to get the perspective feeling about right. And if it feels right, it is right. So it's not quite there yet, we've got a bit more work to do. I'm gonna click on the layer mask, actually the layer mask itself to make that active. I'll go back to my paintbrush, and this time I'm gonna make sure that my foreground color is white and my opacity is set much lower, somewhere in the 30s. And the reason is I want to bring some of the black back. Now remember in the photography stage where I said it drifts off the black in the back and that's really useful, it's not essential, but it really helps now because I can actually bring some of that dark shadow through just to help to blend this in. Try not to bring too much of the soft box in. That should be about right. Fern doesn't look quite the right color, so I think that's my next thing to fix. So I'm gonna click on the thumbnail of Fern to make that active, and then we'll just apply something like image adjustments. Let's do some color balance. I think she needs a bit more blue, so we'll just change the blue. Yeah, again, when it looks right, it is right, and that looks about right. Okay, this is coming together quite nicely, but there's something not quite right about the depth of field. So in my photo in the studio, I've got a shallow depth of field, but in the original, I've still got sharpness. So that's something we need to fix. So back to my layers, click on the background layer that we want to change, and then I'll apply a filter. I'm gonna to go to blur, Gaussian blur, and how much? Well, 
Again, let's just have a little look. We'll put some settings in. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. I'm going to go with that. So now the depth of field appears to match, the colors appear to match. We could stop here, but there's one more thing I'm going to do. I'm happy with everything, so I'll choose layer and flatten image. And then I'm going to go back to filter, camera raw filter. And in camera raw filter, I want to try and sort of bring the two sides left and right together. I know they're two different photos, so I'm going to try and bring them together by using a radial blur and just well, let's just drag out a radial blur first of all and see how we go. Just something like this, not radial blur, it's a radial filter, of course. Radial filter. And I'm going to take, I think we'll take the contrast up and the highlights down. So that should help to make the contrast and highlights similar on both the left and the right side of this image. And that just helps to blend everything together. You could increase or decrease the brightness too, just to, to make that really work together nicely. Finally, I'm going to go back to the edit option on the basic panel. The easiest way, if you're struggling with color, just remove the saturation. That immediately makes everything blend in perfectly. But for me, I'm actually just going to knock the vibrance down a little bit just so we take away some of the strong color. Again, this just helps to blend it all together. And there you go. There's my final picture completed. Well, that was great fun, and I'm really pleased with the end result. In fact, if you looked at it and didn't know we shot it in a studio, you might well think we were on location. But is it as good as being on location? No, this is definitely second best. So if you've enjoyed this video or you've got any questions, leave me a comment below. Click on the bell icon and you'll never miss a video right here on Adorama TV. We have new content pretty much every single day. And of course, remember to click on that subscribe button. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching.